Good afternoon, everyone. I have two union reads for you today, and we're going to get into some oracle cards as well. Um, I actually ended up doing a couple union reads for my personal union yesterday, and the messages were coming up as too important not to share with you. Um, the first union read is the 4D, 5D, 6D, and the second union read is the 3D, 4D, 5D, and that was... Um, that was done today. The one on the table in front of you is 3D, 4D, 5D. I'll show you the other one as well. But first, let's go ahead just and take, just take a first big deep breath. Take another deep breath. One more deep breath. Sending lots of love and blessings out to you guys. And thank you so much for sharing this time with me. Let's go ahead and roll the die to see what comes up for the Twin Flames today. We have the number three far reaching all the way across the table. So number three, which is, which is the Empress. It's also Gaia, abundance, coming together, siblings, socializing, the happy go lucky energy of the smiling person. We have Pluto, which is about, you know, deep and grand transformation, very Scorpio and the three comes up as the Empress, which is Taurus, but it's also March which is Pisces and then going into Aries, which is the, the shift, right, from the old to the new. And then we have Pisces again here. So it's definitely Pisces here, along with Scorpio and Taurus perhaps as well, and maybe some Aries there. But I'm getting more about the shift from the old to the new, right, the Pisces into the Aries the Pluto with profound transformation and the three of the planet of Gaia and the mother energy. And Pisces, I, for the Empress, I get a lot of Pisces coming up right now as well. So let's see where this goes. I'm going to show you the other read. Very profound messages came, came up in these reads. Um, so this is the 4D, 5D, 6D read. For those of you not familiar, the bottom row is the 4D, 5D, and then 6D. The left side is the feminine, the right is the masculine, the, the center is the bridge between them. And you can see this first read, we have destiny of the Two of Cups and the lovers down the middle of the bridge. The incoming divine feminine over here, the outgoing divine masculine over here, the underlying energies, the hangman over here, and the closing energies for this one, the justice card, divine justice. And then the same setup on the table, but I put the underlying energies and the closing energies up top so you could see them. So that's the underlying energy of the Eight of Swords, or orbs in this deck. This is a Syrian Starsky deck. And the closing energies of the Tower here. So again, the one in front of you is the second read. So, and that's this one here. That's the one that's on the table. So you can see it more closely. And again, the first read that I'm covering is this one, which is 4D, 5D, 6D. The one on the table is 3D, 4D, and 5D. So here are the messages. And I watched Beautiful Boy last night, which is a very depressing movie. It's about a teenager who's addicted to crack and um, the never-ending story, right? Because they basically never get over that addiction. And it's always just, you know, your life becomes enveloped by their addiction, so we have, um, and also the differences between dogma and dharma were coming up yesterday. The dogma being the principal belief, but without proof, perhaps a doctrine or a decree or an indisputable belief. And then the dharma of what is right, what is just, what is the res your responsibility or your duty, that which supports something. So we have um, the energy of the union. This was at 646 last evening. 
the six of the lovers, the 46 of the six of cups, the underlying energy being the hanging man, the central energy, the two of cups, and the final energy, the justice, which is truth and balance. Hanging out with a right knee block, which there can be some anger from the masculine bubbling up in the divine feminine here, as two, and I can definitely have felt frustration over the past few weeks, you know, that I don't normally feel, or I haven't in a long time anyway. But some frustrations coming up or anger blocks from the masculine side as two connect face to face for divine justice of truth and balance. Capricorn or Pisces connect with Libra here, and the incoming divine feminine is the Nine of Cups, the Queen of Swords, and the Four of Pentacles. Um, getting your wish after hanging out and seeing new perspectives, perhaps service for nine, or satisfied with self, or Tai Chi, or six vessels of nine all together, and the vessels are the cups, but also it's the, the, the human body is the instrument or the vessel, you know, the cup that holds right it holds the vibration of resonance and the light of the nine the queen of swords with her light and the reed against her right wrist which is like healing her right side and then the e was coming up as fractured and then fracture was coming up as the word frac and chore so it's like the the chore has that word has been coming up in the code line several times in the past week and it's coming up as just one tiny piece of the law of one, right? We are just one piece of the one. The nine of the sea, sea in the sea, seeing with your eyes, seeing with your emotions in the ocean, seeing with the sea of the Christ or unity consciousness. The wise one of the four of pentacles. And in this deck, that's the divine masculine's heart in the bat cave, the crystal bat cave with illumination. Her left-hand man, as opposed to the right-hand man, her left-hand man, left, referring to the divine feminine, who holds her pen, her six of cups, the children loving each other within and the children without, that soulmate energy of innocence, hanging out in the cellar together, the hermit of C toggling left, or the hermit's office at a dead-end block to the left, holding on underground with crystal light or sunlight, six rays of Mary Magdalene raising dogma into spirituality. Marseille and Buttercup Yellow, the tags of Mary Magdalene and the 35 of the Wounded Warrior in my Ascension deck here, which is an Oracle deck, seeing self-happiness by being moderate and grounded. The 4D bridge here, excuse me, the 4D bottom row, is the Ace of Wands, the Great Wheel of Fortune, and the Reason, which is the Emperor. So here again, we have Reason is Ray Sun, the Sun and the Rays. And we're just talking about the six rays of Mary Magdalene. The Ace of Wands, the Wheel, and the Reason, the Divine Feminine ignited, excited, or inflamed on fire. Again, there's that anger of the masculine within the feminine. The Divine Masculine with the Emperor, with Reason, or Logic the sun's ray tossing AI or the false left hand or inflammation, or he's trying to rid himself of the left-handed passion she offers him or arthritic left hand or just feeling on fire. That could be burning in a hand or, or something else that you're trying to get rid of or trying to let go of the fiery hand he was holding. Bridging with the great wheel, destiny, a turn for the better, three planes of existence, Atom and Eve and her three faces. Dest and I'm getting the, the mountain and the mountain's three faces as she is the block for the divine masculine. The Adam and Eve and her three faces, and I'm just getting that now, I'm destined to combine her inspiration with his know-how. And I'm also getting the, say, him saying no and then like an Indian going, how? <laughs> so it's funny how they bring this stuff up. Okay, Adam and Eve and her three faces destined to combine her inspiration and his know-how and wake up the collective. The 5D here is the Tower, the Two of Cups, and the Knight of Swords. The Divine Feminine 5D Tower where Michael knocked Spidey off the wall for graffiti, which is informal inscription or ancient drawings or graphite. Graffiti is graphite, which means I write. An allotrope of carbon atoms 
um, arranged in hexagonal or or six hexagonal arrangement or arrays. So here is again the six and the rays of carbon atoms with planes stacked loosely, or in other words, getting more light into the body as the atoms get farther apart, right? There's more space between. The lightweight, strong and stiff, is all the definition for graphite. The lightweight champion of six rays and carbon atoms, the space between planes of existence and Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, Michael and Metatron, and Minnie Me, as the Divine Masculine is sending 5D message in a bubble to the 6D portal of justice, Dharma, truth and balance, the messenger of truth, or Libra, and scales. The bridging of the two cups, the soul tie in the Garden of Eden, or E's Den, and the 6D is the shadow, the lovers, and the Six of Pentacles. The, and you notice the two of cups and the lovers were in both of these reads. The divine feminine shadow web, manifested dark shadows, the divine masculine sharing or settling out or asking for more. Bridging with lovers, destined to balance the shadow, and it's coming up as the devil and the lovers on the feminine side into the center, and then the masculine side is justice and the six of pentacles from his side into the center, which is all about balancing. So the feminine is working on healing and balancing her sexuality and his side he's learning to trust and share the there's also energy of the virgo to libra which is the time period we're in in september of the virgo being the virgin and the loose libra right because libra is always seeking balance because they're always feeling imbalanced the seeking of, I was just getting loose lips, sinks ships, which can be some Libras love to talk, but the, and the, the Virgo is only always seeking purity, right? But they go overboard seeking, they have to be perfect, which is the perfection issue with Virgo, and then the Libra being indecisive. So we have that balance of purity of Virgo and the balance of Libra, but the purity of love and the balance of truth or light. Love and light, and then L-O and L-I were coming up for the love and light, going into L-A, L-U, and L-E, so all of the vowels. And it was coming up as the L-O of the love, the L-I of the light, the L-A of the angels, Los Angeles, and then the Lu of the fallen angel. The Le, L-E, is the, which, which identifies something. So as opposed to saying angel, you say the angel. You're specifying one part of angels, right? So it's coming up as the part of something bigger. And a bird hit my front window at that moment. So she's, she's seeking sexual or affection balance, and he's seeking justice regarding truth and balance, and hanging out with the devil or settling out with justice, the lover's bridge, the twin flames in a rainbow puff of smoke. At 7.40 last night, which is the chariot and the page of cups, that innocent love, the outgoing divine masculine here was the knight of pentacles, the eight of pentacles, and the strength card, proposing crystal work to birth a new portal from Greece to where the brave dare not roam, the divine feminine breaking on through to the other side. The Bengal tiger, or Libra female with blinders on, holding the scales, or weights and measures, as the Divine Feminine ignites a tower event, starting a fire while locked in the tower, a failure to launch. The movie was definitely coming up here, like where they get tied in the chair and they have to work things out. A failure to launch, seeking the writing on the wall, while the Divine Masculine reasons are sent in a bubble hoping to get paid or at least get a reply. And then what was coming up on the Divine Masculine side was, um, if I could make days last forever and words could make wishes come true, I'd save every day like a treasure and then again I would spend them with you. And there never seems to be enough time. So, you know, time in a bottle. So that was coming up on the masculine side. And then bridge was coming up as the destined twin flames, the nine cups on her side, the nine pentacles on his, 
the divine masculine planning on breaking the sound barrier with a proposal of service for six by the nine crystal line steps and crystal clear that he's caving with a heartfelt surprise the divine feminine with the capricorn pisces scorpio and capricorn on their side with the queen of swords and the divine masculine's heart and the divine masculine with aries sagittarius or leo and libra on their side with the knight of swords and the knight of pentacles and a variation of the divine feminine's heart with the eight of pentacles and the justice portal which is like a heart it's like her standing in his heart portal and then we have the overall number of the 30 which is the union the four of wands with the horizontal pillars being the six two and the 22 of the lovers the high priestess and the fool and the vertical pillars coming out to the nine of the hermit zero which is source four of the emperor not one of the magician two of the high priestess six of the lovers zero source eight of the strength card but also the dance and then zero again before the 30 of the union so the message is coming up as the lovers high priestess or the divine feminine and the fool or the divine masculine in union that can go both ways but the lovers high priestess and fool in union the hermit sourcing new love excited to dance in union with plenty of space the hermit and the emperor hanging out the lovers dance to union also 90 41 and 26 were coming up of compassion love inspiration and then 60 80 and 30 of peace destiny and union and there's very much energy about the the uh, the magician and the high priestess lovers and doing the dance of the you know the the hermit and the emperor are kind of opposite right one goes within to be wise one goes without to be wise in their perspective or being in control whereas the hermits in control of the, their own world as opposed to others worlds um so there's an interesting uh contrast right there so then we go into um this read in front of you which was the 3d 4d 5d read and it was very interesting. I was watching Elena Denon yesterday. Um, she did an interview with William. What was his last name? But anyway, you'll see it. It was, was the last video. William Watkins. Okay, so she was interviewing him yesterday. And there was a couple words I have to bring up from the video because they connect to the downloads I was getting. It kind of gave me um, a definition of what I was getting. So first I started this union read and this was at um at 1053 to 55. 53 is the knight of swords and 55 is the truth. The 10 of course is the wheel of fortune, the destiny, the turn for the better. That high vibration of the 1010. So the physical union for the 3D, 4D, 5D and today of course is September 30th, which is the 30 of the union and the 9 of the hermit and today adds up to 44, eight, which is actually my life lesson number. The 44 is the uh, four of cups of grounding and integrating and mastering of love, especially receiving it. And the day is the 30 of the four of wands. There's a lot of fours coming up. The 44, the four of cups, the four of wands. And then personally a four of pentacles was coming up as well. So one of the statements that Elena had made was the critical singularity which when she says it it's it's kind of hard to understand what she means by it but what but it really rung with me when i got my download and then i had to go back to listen to her statement again so the 3d 4d 5d union here with the eight of swords in the underlying energy which is up in front of you the ace of swords in the middle and then the tower is the final card hiding in the woods by the creek feeling the way through without the eyes without seeing the dolphin truth in the middle of it all, the Lemurian wisdom ready to play ball, using the emerald and the magenta to hide, but when green and pink mix, it muddies the water. So something they had said in the video, and this was coming from William, that we must all wake up and see the face of evil, which Elena also said because she's gotten that from Thor Han a lot. Um, and William was talking about... Um, his perspective of what Jesus was regarding Elohim being a planet. So you might want to watch the video about all that, but I'm not going to go into that. But Elena also was talking about humanity being in an abusive relationship with the deep state. 
and we must experience that that um, face of evil or that negativity, which is where she brought up the the critical singularity that is too much, where we finally crack up or open and wake up, open our eyes and run or say no, basically. And again, depending on our friends who are always there for her, for us to support us in what we're doing. So again, it's about when we take back our power, finally, we as humans will then will be in a place to teach them, like we'll be in a higher vibration than the Pleiadians or even Jesus and that kind of energy. So we need to see the face of the evil and their allies, like who the evil is. Um, and then a statement that she made, this was at 47, uh, right on the dot there, um, was a sleeping water that seemed clear on the surface, but a lot of mud on the bottom or in the bottom, that the mud needs to be seen and scooped and then people can drink the water. And that was Elena talking about what Thor Han had said to her multiple times. So the mud, now we're going back to my read and why it was resonating with me. This mud is the darkness cleansing and why the whales, because the whales struggling have been coming up constantly in my reads the past month, why the whales are struggling in the water now that the mud has been stirred up. It's like in those cards, in the animal spirit cards where they, um, the rainbow energy has gone into the planet, so it's pushing all the dark energy out. It's like the mud being pushed out, but it's being pushed out of the bottom of the ocean past the whales and they're really struggling to keep balanced because they usually keep us balanced. So it's about that water getting all muddied as opposed to it all being settled at the bottom. It's easier to scoop it up once it's settled on the bottom. Otherwise, it could be, we could be transmuting or filtering that water for much, a much longer time period. If we separate the mud into emerald and magenta, a ball that sits on the water like a clean air or water filter, but mixed together, it is not useful. But kept apart and together or side by side, it's a very powerful elixir. So it's saying it's something more powerful when it's um, side by side as opposed to melded together or alchemized. So it's a very powerful elixir to the air and to the water. The creek is pure mud. But this is softening the earth, right? The, the little bit of water on the earth softens the earth as opposed to muddying the ocean water that usually you would see sand at the bottom, right? Things become powerful in scarce conditions. And we've talked about that, whether it's adrenochrome or the olive trees and which ones have more potent energy in them when they're, when they're grown in Morocco in a very starved environment, they're much more potent. One stands in mud and can be turned on, as Elena says with the Pleiadians, that we have the ability to turn on a light bulb by standing in mud. In muddy water, though, we get turned off. The earth absorbs some water, and water absorbs some earth. Pure manifestation can absorb some emotion, but pure emotion cannot absorb too much manifestation. We don't know that the water is dirty until there's been overkill or lots of mud settled at the bottom. We don't even know that the water has been dirtied, right? Because you can't see it. You only know that there's saturation of mud in the water when it starts lying at the bottom because it can't take anymore, which means the water has reached its limit of holding crap at 1130, which is justice and the union. Underwater bases and portals and weather manipulation come up here of sunken ships and trash and human pee and poop where poop is just stinky mud after all, the stuff your body doesn't need anymore. The calm before the storm, even talons unable to hold on. Hiding in the woods by the creek, hiding under water, waiting to reveal the writing on the wall in a tower event. With Michael and Metatron, lightning and thunder, and multiple fires and or dramas to douse. The lightning starts the fire, but the rain puts it out. But sometimes there's only one thunder roll and then a drought. The fire dries it out. So what they were bringing up here is that dry eyes and dry skin means there's too much fire held in the body it has, that hasn't been used. It means you need to get out that aggression. And this comes up as, as the energy of not wanting to confront, right? Not wanting to show your anger. 
Also, too much sweat or water and oils means that emotions are not being expressed. This is where the imbalance is coming out in the body. Too many thoughts or circling in thoughts is saying you're not being in your authenticity, you're not speaking your truth. And then boredom is the need to create something. So there's fear of confrontation, fear of rejection and abandonment, the fear of humiliation and betrayal, you know, the five major wounds, and then the fear of injustice, that your manifestation won't get the attention it deserves. Fear of truth and the fall, the need to escape from prison or make a break for it. Graphite, the writing on the wall of carbon and six rays in three planes of existence. Escape, or S for Sophia's cape, in leaving three plus six and achieving the nine. Okay, it's three, six, nine is the 3D, 45D representation. The 5D heaven on earth existence, the epiphany that comes from the synchronicity and the sudden knowing, the sudden hearing, the sudden insight and feeling, or increase of frequency of light and increase in resonation of sound. The M&Ms are really good and they melt in your hands. The colors of the rainbow to entice you onto the bridge of purgatory, the muddy waters you must sludge through, like Cryon said this morning about torturing our kids just in order to surprise them with something wonderful. The M&Ms are just the tip of the iceberg in the journey or journaling to the diamond light and the crystalline bodies. The instrument or empty vessel that bellows. Michael and Metatron, Mother and Mary, me and Mini-Me. Mountains and valleys are the M's that raise you and fill your cups or vessels. The M and M to have and to hold, two as one, two of a kind world at 1157, which is justice and the separation of the three of swords. Though I walk through the valley of death, or, or of the shadow of death at 1159, which is literally the 11th hour, the moment before 12. So again, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, per me and many me and the friends nearby, I will fear no evil for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So here is the new inter per interpretation of that is that you don't fear the shadow of death because you have your higher self and friends nearby, other ETs on the other side of the veil. The incoming divine feminine for this read is the indigo, the, the four of swords and the six of swords. The release of the indigo child showered in O oh, ones, and I was just getting oys. <laughs> release of the indigo child showered in that high vibe O oh, ones of computer technology or computer language the computer crystal terminology, sitting in the ocean or salt water, deep in their shadow, watching dolphins pass and dive deep, or making an offering to an animal friend, from the creek or the pond to the river or sea where it moves, the indigo and the shadow man or woman, and deep diver, Lemurian, the crystallization of coal and water, or humans in other words, in the 3D here is the lovers, the queen of cups, and ascension, the divine feminine fuming rainbow mist from hot iron core to the mist of Avalon, our airing out the house, the divine mask and ascending with the world in his right hand, I dream of genie and Middle East, and East for me represents the feminine again, a sense connection with the world and or divine feminine in the 5D, bridging with the queen of cups in the fall, in the lap of luxury, or Cancer or Pisces twin, or one of great affection, or whose cup runneth over, the divine feminine fireball here, the divine masculine earth ball, bridging with the queen of cups, who is the buoy or boy blocking the truth from coming out, floating without a care in the world. 4D here is the seven of cups, the ace of swords, and the two of pentacles. The divine feminine with synchronicities spiraling up to seventh heaven with the eight ball on top of the rack, 72s by two marching, which is the 144 in the eyes of March, another reference to Pisces there, the divine masculine surrendering to all that is, where the land meets the sea, 
reflecting a pink whale aura jumping out of the sea, or AOK -okay symbol instead of Christ's hand with a hole in it. Bridging with the whole truth as opposed to the H-O-L-E whole truth. So help me, friends of higher self. And this is all coming out around 1221. Um, the dog is the, you know, the dog is the, the word God in reverse. The dog is the loyal friend, the reflection of the so-called God collective, the truth always just below the surface if you just take the moment to look. The 5D is the moon, the seven of wands, and alchemy. The divine feminine, Luna, or moon, and romantic subconscious energies, and the eight ball that meets the Q. Or divine masculine's Mars connection, and alchemizing the two of the moon and Mars. Fire and water, bridging with the seven of wands, the Christ vibration rising up with flame in hand, and cell block tango, ungrounded and dramatic, a sight for sore eyes, the fire needing expression here. The outgoing divine masculine here is the shadow, two of cups, and the page of pentacles. Meeting in the shadows or on the world wide web, the two cups in the garden of Eden and the page of pentacles curious about their abilities to epiphanize or escape or do magic at 1231, which is the hanging man and the expansion of playing or or battling, or the pursuit of happiness, or games. At 1232, which is the hangman and the journey, the divine feminine lovers, 72 by 2, at the new moon, which is coming up at the 7th, October 7th, perhaps going into the 8th. And October 8th has always been a sp special day for some reason, I don't know why. But the divine mask and ascending and surrendering and alchemizing a higher love. The bridge of the Queen of Cups with the truth ready to play ball and rise from the ashes and drama more than standing up for self. The flyer with flame in hand. The Divine Feminine with Gemini, Virgo, and Cancer on their side. And the Masculine with Sag, Pisces, and Capricorn and Scorpio on his side. And you notice they match up exactly. The Divine Feminine had Gemini to the Masculine Sag, which is the same axis. The Divine Feminine had Virgo to the Masculine's Pisces and the Divine Feminine's Cancer to the Masculine's Capricorn. And then Scorpio is on the Masculine side, but there was no Taurus to match it on the Feminine side. So that may be someone who's missing, or the Page of Pentacles who comes up. And then the Queen of Cups could be that Scorpio. That's, and the Queen of Cups is coming up as between the Masculine and Feminine, along with the truth of Atlantis and Lemuria, or the islands and the desert. The, the in, it, in Dig is coming up, which can reference in doing a dig, you know, as far as archaeology, but also the indigenous, the four of the sea, sea and the sea, so four of the ocean, the emotion, the sight of the vision, the sea of the Christ or unity consciousness, and diving deep into the peaceful sea. The little mermaid in Poseidon's adventure with Pegasus, or Peg as us, even though they are more fiery, they're still one of us. They just have to keep him up or raised. So it's, it's referencing as Poseidon and the, and the Little Mermaid being very water-based or Lemurian-based, whereas Pegasus is the masculine based in Atlantis. So even they're more fiery, there's still one of us. You just have to keep him up, right? His feminine energy up and raised and flying, keeping him flying. And then the Shah was coming up and S-H-A-I as well, which means yeast or enzyme distressed, hard, or difficult, or die. So to dry up, to be young and on fire is the Shah, as well as the letter that looks like a W, but it's squared off, like the, the rolling stone E as a W. To dry up, to be young and on fire, or to be king and die and evaporate and fade away. So it's this, this uh, contrast of the young and the old. The two of the sea of water, both charged and useful, but then can cross the line and then can destroy as well. The seeker of crystals elevating their emotions, using that charge of the water to manifest epiphanies and replace the ancient writings on the wall. So here again is the old going into the new, the Pisces going into the Aries. And the overall number for this read was 37, which is the King of Cups or Unconditional Love. The horizontal pillars came out to 15, 10, and 12, which is the devil. 
the Wheel of Fortune and the Hanging Man. And the verticals came out to eight of the Strength card, four is the Emperor, six is the Lovers, seven is the Chariot, eight is the Dance or the Strength card again. Then the two of the High Priestess, zero of Source, two of the High Priestess, zero of Source again. And the messages were coming up as the Devil destined to hang out with, unki with the King of Cups or with unconditional love. And the dance of the children, whether it's the inner children or outer children, heaven on earth, 2020, the king of cups, unconditional love, with clear vision of that unconditional love here. The dance of the children in heaven on earth, they, the new, have the clear vision of unconditional love. So it's saying, you know, the older, the older perspectives, the older people, you have to let your ideas fade away as the new um, uprising of the children comes in to teach you the way, you know, making way for the new generation. So let's see what the animal spirit deck has to say about all of this. So again, with the dice, we had Pisces and the earth of three, Gaia, and the mother, because the mother came up in many ways as well with the M&Ms and Mary and Mary Magdalene. And then the Pluto event. So Pluto is the end, right? It's the, ma the main transformation of the world as we're changing from Pisces into Aquarius, but also the end of the cycle into the new, the um, end of the older generation into the newer generation. All of those very profound messages here, along with the three, as the 3D goes away. So let's see what the animal spirit cards have to say about all this. And remember, like our way of communicating is now through seeing synchronicities, which give us our epiphanies without words. Like you can understand a whole concept just by a download that you receive as opposed to having to re read a whole book. So from the animal deck here, we have dear one, <laughs> dear one. And honeybee. <laughs> They're very, and I'm even laughing like cryon, which is cracking me up. Okay, so this is very cryon energy. Dear one and honeybee. This is my sweet ones who are very balanced, right? They're in their yellow, blue to green, or yellow, green to blue, which is that solar plexus, heart to throat energy of being in the middle. Dear bee. The bee is tired of using these little wings to keep them up. And this is where they get the big wings and they become the butterfly and transform. That's how we keep them up. And then we have the two swans. Well, there's so much sweet energy coming through you guys. After the swans is the lamb. So beautiful. So it's coming up as the dear ones who have come into their balance, who are being moderate, right, in their heart, come into union as the, as the swans, okay? And then here we have the lion and the lamb coming out together. And the, lamb, the lion's getting a message from the hummingbird who's clearing the air as the hawk is clearing in the other direction. Okay, so this is what's going on around us. We still have the energy of the lion and the lamb but the lion is still in their ego a bit, right? Because the lamb is the, one, the energy of the sweet one that the lion wouldn't normally pay any attention to or give the time of day to, but perhaps they pulled a thorn out of their paw. And the lion still needs to get past their ego to thank the lamb. And the lamb is very sweet. You know, they're unconditionally loving over there. But, you know, they're also vulnerable and they may have a target on their head. But the lion here may be guarding them. They may not be associating with them quite yet because their ego is still getting the best of them. But they are protecting them, even if they're not looking at them right now. They are protecting them. And then we have the hummingbird who is like whispering in the lion's ear. And this relationship came up yesterday too in my cards. And the hummingbird, you can see, is at a very high vibration, clearing, you know, clearing that dark energy like without a second thought. It's very easy for this hummingbird to clear this energy. All they have to do is walk through it and it clears the energy. But it's like the hummingbird's struggling because they're saying like, I can make a miracle here 
but I can't change the way you think. Like you have to do that for yourself. I can make miracles over here, but you have free will. I can't make you something that you don't want to be, no matter how much positive vibration I give to you. It has to be your choice. And it even feels like this little spot right here is a tear coming down the lion's face because they know that they're so wrapped up in their pride, they're cutting off their nose to spite their face, right? Because they have this sweet energy who is loving and saved them, right? The one who was left for dead with only the with only the Bambi type of energy to save them. So here's the Bambi that saved the lion, but the lion has still turned their back on them, even though they're protecting them. They're not telling them they're protecting them. They're just doing it. They can't actually face them because they wouldn't normally associate with them. And then here is the high vibrational energies trying to help them change, but they can't change unless they want to change. The hummingbirds are already producing miracles, but you can't you can't make someone's mind up for them because we're on a free will planet. You have that choice, right? So the birds just go on clearing the collective and you can stay here in the 3D if you want. It's up to you. It's your choice, but this is ego. The bottom of the deck is the crow. The crows are standing guard. They're, they're not going to move. They're still protecting the earth as it clears, as the collective awakens and the dark energies are coming out. The birds are there to clear the air, okay? And beneath that, right, is that drama, right? This is that 3D drama of the fire ants, whether this is an accident, a fight, or that beautiful person that everyone's trying to grab a piece of. The birds are on guard here. We will never let you down is what I'm getting from the Pleiadians here, right? They're all up in the sky protecting us which is what Elena Danan always says about the Pleiadians. They always say that we will never let you down. All right, so that was very clear. That was very beautiful, actually. So that message just brought in Cryon, Elena Danan with Thorhan, and then Val Thor, actually, actually, I think, is who said that to Elena. We will never let you down. But I think Thorhan says that as well. Very interesting. And the crow. So the, I put up that chart of the crow's distance. Is the, tr is the right triangle, right? You can look that up to the meaning of the crow's distance. I forget if that's the actual exact title or not. Flying the, crow's, flying the crow's distance. I forget what it is. But going along the hypotenuse of the triangle as opposed to the other person going the longer route around. And there may be an advantage to that. I don't know. I haven't read the definition for that in a long time. All right. So what comes out of the journey of love is rings of time, which is the 44 of the grounding, integrating, and mastering of love and receiving of love. And you notice this looks like a person in a wheelchair. It's the old. It's the thoth energy, which is the, is the old, as opposed to the Metatron, which is the new, right? Even though Metatron's always been around, there was a message I'd gotten somewhere. I forget where it came from where Metatron and Thoth were the same energy and they have split, right? So now the Thoth energy is falling away as the old energy and the Metatron going forward. Um, but this does look that like have like that bird head energy of Thoth, but also can represent a masculine or a feminine person in a wheelchair. You know, someone who's old and can't do for themselves anymore and has to depend on receiving love to take care of them. So there's many old people, like my parents went through this as well. They had to be taken care of by people who they never would have given the time of day to, who, who gave them lots of love. Um, so there's definitely that energy coming up here, but it's the rings of time of, of how long something takes to come into union as well and to, to be rebirthed, right? Because there is no real death. We just go into another dimension. But this is the energy of death and rebirth. And the three planes of existence, but we have the four here. So they may be insinuating a fourth plane of existence. Of course, there's many planes of existence, but, you know, involving the atom and the three rings and the 3D, 4D, 5D, um, the planes of existence of being living on the earth, in the earth, or outside in the, you know, in the, in the, in the galaxy. There's all different references to the planes of existence, but... We also have the guardian of the soul family here of the 26, which is the page of wands, that inspiration of the young child, right? When the young comes into your world, how much 
how much inspiration it gives you, right? To have young people around you all the time to inspire you. They have such a new outlook. They keep you feeling new and fresh, right? Not the same old, same old that if you were alone and old and you didn't have that inspiration around. Remember how much love that the child brings to your life. How much fun it is to just be in the energy of young people. Which is something that was just coming up for me. Um, and then the last card that wants to be seen here is the heart of the moment, which is the 16 of the tower. And you see how red it is. But it's the representation of the heart here. But yet it's the root chakra of the red, which is safety and security issues. And that's where most of the trauma lies. In the childhood. The bottom of the deck, guys, is the lovers. The 57 is the separation, the heartbreak, the disappointment. But then it's simple. It's the lovers. It's just the lover of the beloved. It just is. And this is the old, the dying, the rings of time, the rings of the tree, the rings of the wheelchair, the rings of the marriage, the commitment, and the, of the family to guard the soul family as the new children come in, right? We're guardians of the new children and their safety and stability, which is the root chakra where all our trauma lies to clear out the root chakra and the sacral chakra for all of the new kids to come up so they won't have to experience it the way that we did. So let's read what they have to say. The 44. So it's like the lovers coming together to take help people transition from the old to new, to create families, which is the old to new, bringing in new babies, and then clearing the root chakra trauma issues, the main trauma that everybody carries so that the collective will be able to go forward in a much lighter way. So 44 is the first one, and that says, Divine timing is granted to us as a gift. Sometimes if we want to be further ahead than we are, that gift can seem like a restriction rather than a generous holding. Much like traffic that moves systematically so that not only one car but many can reach their destination, destination according to a greater harmony and alignment, we are like individual cars that must sometimes accept red lights and at other times can flow swiftly through many green lights. It is just this way, the systematic flow of divine energy through human manifestation. Your spiritual maturation is happening perfectly. There's no need to bother yourself about timing. When doors open, walk through. And when there appear to be no such openings, rest and reflect. The rings of time serve you, beloved. This oracle brings you a message that the divine is completely responsible for the timing of every event, opportunity, and happening of grace in your life. All you need to do is live your life. Everything else is taken care of for you now. This applies to all of your plans and the unfolding of all of your relationships. Let it all breathe and let the divine happen as it will. There is a beautiful silence now as I hold your hands and listen to your eyes across a span of moments called time. There are no words that say as much, nor walls that could confine the wings of our feelings or the rhythm of our eyes. The second one was number 26, which is the guardian of the soul family. You are being drawn to kindred spirits in this physical world by loving guardians in the spirit world. If you feel you're leaving relationships behind, do not be afraid. The space that such courageous action creates is sometimes necessary in order to have room for the new to enter your sphere of consciousness. You may also feel that somehow a relationship that seemed to be held back from you is now becoming available to you. There is a great soul love calling you into more intimate connection now. It is sanctioned by the divine. It is a karmic destiny to fulfill. There is love that you are to experience in connection with particular souls predetermined by the divine plan. If you're struggling to feel the sole purpose in your current relationships, take heart for you're being, you're being helped by divine guardians who understand and support the sacred purpose of your relationships. Be open to current relationships healing, whether that means improved communication and enriched experience, or the realization that you have traveled as far as you can together, and know that new relationships are going to be an important aspect of your spiritual destiny being fulfilled. Trust in the divine timing of your life and open your heart to the guardians who help you with unconditional love now. The guidance of this oracle for you is that the relationship healing is taking place. In present relationships unfolding, 
in attracting the right relationships for your future growth and in leaving behind relationships of the past with a peaceful heart. Be gentle with your heart, beloved. All is well. When I open my heart, you cover me with a blanket of love and warm the silence with your caress. Words unspoken say it all as we become more than we are alone. And then into the heart of the moment. So into the heart of the moment is number 16, like the tower. You are entering a time in your life where past and future are, col are colliding. So here again, it's, it's um, confirming all of this ending to the new, right? Past and future, old to new. You're entering a time in your life where past and future are colliding. In this present moment, you have powerful opportunity to decide how you wish to continue in a certain pattern of relating or not. It may mean leaving a relationship or starting a new one, but even if you cannot make that decision with peace in your heart, you can still partake of the heart of this moment and decide how you shall choose to be. Will you speak? Will you choose to let go of shame and criticism, of judgment, anxiety, of loss and despair, and just be with your own heart now? Will you choose in this moment to trust yourself, even if that trust says you have to wait a while longer before you can make a more long-term decision? This is a time when you can alter your future, stepping into a relationship with another, with the divine, with yourself, in a new way. Even the smallest choice for love is a step in the best direction. You have the heart of the divine within you. It's not too hard for you to choose love. Let go of the people who want you to choose jealousy or fear or doubt. Their games are not nearly as fun. Choose love and who knows, maybe they'll join your party instead. This oracle brings you a message. You are in a transition zone in your life and relationships. This is one moment that will manifest as many opportunities where one choice will open up many pathways to fulfillment for you. We always have the chance to create our future with our present choices, but at this time you are in an especially fertile karmic period, having just come out of a cycle of learning and about to enter into a new cycle. This is the time to be willing to take a chance or, to, or a risk to be happy within yourself no matter what is going on around you. Your life is about to take a karmic turn and you can feel peace in that knowing. Love provides the opportunity to express the core essence of our very nature. It touches us at a level of feeling beyond the human norm and renders our beings incapable of a feeling with greater depth or wonder. Love is the fabric of life. It is the substance that holds it all together and the magic that opens the unknown. It is the quality that speaks to our soul, that opens our heart, that excites our spirit and allows us in its presence to become something greater than ourselves, something more than we are alone. So there are your messages, very profound and beautiful today. And make sure you drink your water, get your rest, get your joy, get your nature. Make sure to breathe. If you deep breathe every day, you will most likely not get sick. I know that. That's what the, the cold water divers always talk about. If you breathe 10 to 20 times a day or hyperventilate in the morning, you won't ever get sick. So remember to breathe and how important it is to get your breath into every cell. And rise and be loved, guys. I will see you soon. Have an amazing day. Bye.